There's just something about watching a 3D print on a time-lapse video. Isn't that just sweet to watch? It's a bit mesmerizing. Can you guess what it is? There it is, it's the Statue of Liberty and I printed it right here on my 3D printer. Welcome back to another Jeff Reviews for you. And as you saw in this video, we are looking at the toy box where you, I mean, where kids can print their very own toys on a mini 3D printer. You know what, enough talk, let's get right into this review. Here's our Toy Box 3D printer. This is, I guess, the beginner package. It comes with the 3D printer itself. And then of course we have one filament. They call it printer food. This retailed for right around $300. I will say there was a lot of packaging built into this Toy Box, so they wanted to make sure it was safe in transport. Just make sure you get all that out before you start. Our dimensions here, it's about nine inches tall, seven and a half inches wide, seven and a half inches deep, and it weighs just over 15 pounds. Just looking at our 3D printer, we can see we have the print bed here. Of course, there's a nozzle, there's a hole on the top here, which I'm guessing the filament goes through. It looks to be almost like an LCD, an LED screen right there. There are not any directions that come with it, so we're gonna plug it in and see what happens. For me, the plug goes right in the back. We just push it in. I will say it felt a little weird pushing the plug in like I had a lot of resistance and that plug does not go in all the way. After we plugged it in, the screen lights up and tells us to go to make.toys slash welcome. So let's see what's there. I went to the website and this just tells us to go to the app store and download the Toy Box app. So I'm actually gonna go to the Google Play site and download it from there. Now that we've downloaded our app, we open it up and we're gonna go down to where it says My Toy Box. We don't have one installed yet, so I'm gonna sign in, at least try to, but I don't have an account. So I have to create an account. I'm gonna type in my username. We're just gonna do Jeff Reviews for you. Hit next. It's gonna ask us to do a password. Once we enter our password, let's go forward with the arrow. We're gonna select a birthday. It asked us for a few more things, and so I went through there. Now we're ready to set up the Toy Box. It says, confirm our toy box. I do not have that button on the front. No, it does not. So now I'm gonna follow through here on my directions to set up my filament. As per the directions, we pulled out this cable. We already had it plugged in. We were just asked to connect to the toy box Wi-Fi, so I did. It was the only one listed as toy box. On this screen, of course, we can see that this is requiring a internet connection. I don't actually know what this E one that's listed there is, so I'm gonna look for my network connections to try to set this up. So we have just connected our toy box to our Wi-Fi internet and the screen immediately told us that it was updating. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back after this is done updating. All right, so now it's displaying a six digit code on the screen that we have to enter into the app. After we entered our code on the app, it sure says ready to rumble on the little screen and on our app. All right, now we have to start the process. But you know what I noticed we haven't done yet? We haven't installed our filament. So maybe we'll go here to the toy box first. To set this up, we have the filament holder on the back here. We just stick it in and twist it so it locks into place. Now we're just gonna snap on our food or filament right there. To start out, I cut my filament there at a point and then I slide it right in the hole where it's gonna start being fed through. Let's hit the four dots in the corner here. I wanna put in some food. It says it's warming up. The directions tells us this is supposed to take about a minute to warm up. As that's heating up, I wanted to take the time to show you the magnetic base right here. There was plastic on it that I had to remove. It actually had a sticker that says remove before using, but I appreciate this magnetic base. One, that it's removable, making it easier for you to take your prints off, but it's also flexible. Our screen has changed, so now we can actually insert the filament. So I'm gonna push that button. I can automatically feel this thing coming down through. Let's see what happens. Let's hit it again. I'm waiting for some of the filament to come out of the nozzle head. Oh, let's hit it again. I'm just gonna keep pushing it until it feeds all the way through. You can see it took about six times for the filament to come through. I'm excited, let's go onto the app now and find something to print. I should say, when you're all done printing, it's important to go through the process backwards and actually remove 
the filament. You do this by clicking the remove button. You wanna make sure to take it all out so there's nothing in there blocking the nozzle. Once it's all removed, now you can put it away in storage. I just looked at the most popular items on the app and they actually have a lot of pre-made characters or things that you can print. This one just happens to be something it looks like for Halloween. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click print. You saw as soon as I hit print, well, something started to happen. Well, that's cool. The screen actually says beaming down. So it's sending it from the internet to my toy box. That is neat. We're still waiting for our first print. After it was finished beaming and then warming up, all of a sudden it said print canceled. So I just said print again, and now it's warming up again. So we'll see if it actually prints this time. This is strange. It's canceled me twice. Very frustrating. Let me try a different print. I failed to print about five times, and so I decided to cancel that, and I went and tried the calibration first, and maybe that's what I was supposed to do, but the directions never really told me that. As soon as I clicked the calibration part, it started, well, printing. You can see right here on the app, as it's calibrating, it's telling me how long it's gonna take to calibrate, just over five minutes or so. So we're gonna come back when this is completely finished, if it prints successfully. Now that our calibration is complete, I'm gonna wait a minute or so because it tells us to let this cool down before I take off the tray, pop off the calibration circle. And then this actually says, let's start printing. So maybe now we can print. I really wanna print this one. So I'm gonna print the Flex Rex Halloween without the hat. Let's see what happens when I print me. Tell me it's beaming the toy to the toy box. We'll see if it actually prints this time. Yay, it looks like it's actually starting. I don't know if I see anything coming out of the nozzle. At least it's coming out pretty weird, but at least it's starting something. And I'm gonna come back and check on this. It says it's supposed to take an hour and five minutes, so I'll be peeking at it all throughout the uh, print, but hey, it looks like it's doing something. Now the first layer looks like it's kind of a mess, but we'll see what it looks like at the end. Sadly, as you can see, it is a flop. We can see our print has come right off the print bed, and this is very frustrating, especially after it's been printing for about 15 minutes. You thought it was gonna be good, and. There it is. When I talk about misprints, here's what I get. Like parts that were printing and all of a sudden it got knocked off of the toy box bed, print bed, or it just stopped printing well at all. This particular one I was trying to print, it actually shifted everything to the left and therefore the print failed. So just expect that this kind of stuff happens along the way and you might have to troubleshoot the various prints. Toy box actually includes these four by four, they call them sticky pads, and it looks just like some tape that you put onto your print bed in efforts to help not have print failing. I had a couple prints that worked out well, so I didn't think I needed this, but I'm gonna put this on since I've just failed a couple times. Here's what it looks like installed. I'm not sure how many uses I'll get out of this sticky pad, but I'm excited to try it out anyway. We put our sticky pad on, and like I said, it looks just like a big, piece of painter's tape, but we will see what happens. We are now on the second round through. Does it look like it's printing? I don't know if I can see a whole lot coming out. There's this big glob that it put down first that kind of bothers me, and I'm worried that that might throw our print off again, but we'll see what happens. To avoid any problems, I just knocked that piece off, so now it's all at least flat. So my thought is when the print nozzle comes back, it's not gonna knock into that piece and maybe knock it off of the sticky pad of the print base. That being said, my T-Rex is not gonna have a tail. Well, we had another fail. I thought it was just gonna not print the tail, but every time I went over there, it would just try to drop a whole lot of filament and then eventually just started pushing off the other pieces. So we're on the third try. Hopefully this time it can print. What I'm gonna do this time though is while it's waiting, I'm actually gonna start cutting off some of this part that just dribbles down right here because I think that's what's glooping up on the board is it's heating up there, it's just dribbling it down. Here goes nothing. I wonder if that needs to calibrate again. After about six failed attempts at printing, I noticed that the nozzle did not come close to the front of the base here. It connected back here, but right in the front it was lifted slightly. So what I did is I took one of those calibration circles that I had, and I just slid that under the front just to lift it up a little bit. Hopefully this will work. I'm actually gonna be printing a brand new spool holder because I have some spools of filament but they don't fit on the toy box. So I figured before I printed anything else, maybe I should print another spool holder. Therefore, when I do run out of this white, I can use one of the other ones. Based on first viewing here, it looks like it's doing okay. I don't notice anything printing weird. So 
I appreciate that. So I'm kind of excited and hopeful that this will work. This is what our finished spool holder looks like. I think it's really neat that I can print this and now I can hang bigger rolls on the back of the toy box. Let's install it. Just like the one that came with it, you just fit these pieces into place and there you have your new spool holder. I think I might print this in green. The cool thing is they have a full inventory of products that you can use just for your toy box. This one right here just provides an extra clip on the side so I can hang things. I end up hanging my scissors there just so I know where they are. Over the course of a couple of days, I was able to print a lot of different things from these flexible dinos to the Statue of Liberty, the Eiffel Tower, even a Lego piece. Very cool. There are so many different things on the Toy Box library. I'm super impressed. But guess what? There's something even cooler. Let me show you. Right in the Toy Box app, you can actually design and print your very own person. You can see here we have pants and a shirt and hair and a head and shoes, arms, all very sweet. It even comes with these connector pieces. To get this to work, you just have to put the connector piece in. It might be tight at first, but push it in, let it hear a snap. You do it on both sides. We can continue building. We're going to pop on the arms. Oh, you know what? Let's put the head on. It's coming together. So tell me, what do you think of the toy box? Something you're looking into? Not so much. Let me know down in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. Of course, we can't have our guy being bald, so we printed up some Elvis hair and snapped that in the place. When you're done, look how cool it looks. My son even built one. It's really, the possibilities are endless. Let's snap that arm back in a little bit. You can use different colors as long as you have the filament. In this video, we are taking a look at the Toy Box, the 3D printer set made for kids. So what did I think of it? First things first, let's talk about that price point. $300, in my opinion, seemed a little steep. Don't get me wrong, it does a lot of cool things. It's just a small 3D printer for that kind of money. I wanted to talk about the setup and use. In my opinion, something that's intended for kids, this thing needed some directions to set it up because I think kids are gonna get this or kids that maybe their parents don't know anything about 3D printers and it looks cool, let's get it, but they're gonna need help to set it up. I was not impressed that there were no directions right in the box and I would have liked it to have had some sort of a directions that I could read and look at instead of just something trying to tell me what to do online. As far as the printing, it was a little frustrating that I kept getting rejected over and over and over again. And then once I calibrated, well then it worked. Yet again, if I had directions telling me calibrate first, that would have been avoided. As with all 3D printers, there's some trial and error. My first couple prints actually printed fine. I thought it was just great to go right out of the box. Well, then they started to fail, so I tried the sticky tape and maybe it started to work, but I noticed that even the tray bed wasn't level, so I used a piece of a printing that I had and I leveled it. They do have tools that you can level it with, I just preferred trying something on the fly and it worked for me. My six-year-old just loves it. He'll flick through the toy box menu and finding various things to print and he just has a great time. I should say that there is a paid option that you can actually buy into a subscription plan that gets you tokens or whatnot and you can get some of the prints that maybe just are not available on the free side. Anyway, if this is something that interests you, I'm going to link it down below. I'm also going to link some of the filaments that I use instead of having to purchase the food from Toybox. This is Jeff with Jeff Reviews for you. As always, thanks for stopping by and I hope you have a great day. I'm not going to go up close and personal to all the different prints that we made, but check this out. This is called a Dr. Flexi Rex and check that out. It actually moves that is super, super cool. Now this prints like this on the print bed altogether. I did not have to snap this into place. I just think it's amazing. I really do appreciate that you stayed around for my entire review of Toy Box. You know what? Not that long ago, I actually reviewed another toy and it's called the Zip String, something else I found on Instagram. Anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link that review right up here and I would love it if you would click on this link. And when you do, by the magic of the internet, I'm gonna join you right here. So go ahead, click it. It's safe, I promise.